Um, I'm going to read pretty fast. I'm going I'm to try to read pretty fast to get us through it just because there's three places that Paul goes and it's important to the message that we have. Uh, and, and actually, verse 22, it talks about uh, uh, tribulation for the kingdom of God. How, how that, uh, the, the, you know, the apostles and all, how we uh, should expect tribulation when we're sharing the gospel. Because of that, I need, you, I need you to get the whole story here of the 22 verses. So, uh, again, I don't like to do that, but I am going to read 22 verses, verses 1 through 22 of Acts 14. I'm going to try to do it really, really fast. Title of the sermon, Tribulation for the Kingdom of God. Okay? Now, this is not the great tribulation we're looking at in Revelation. This is just when we go through trials and tribulation in our, in our lives. Okay? And so I'm going to bring out some points that I think will be, be very relevant to us tonight. Tribulation for the Kingdom of God, Acts chapter 14, verses 1 through 22. I'm going to ask you to rise to your feet as always. Pay tribute to the reading of God's Word. I'm going to read fast, so hang on. You, you follow along there. Verse, uh, verse 1 of chapter 14. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went both together to the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake, that a great multitude, both of Jews and also of the Greeks, believed. But the unnumbered Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Long time therefore abode they speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the word of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. But the, but the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles. And when there was an assault made, both of Gentiles and also of Jews with the, their rulers, to use them despitefully and to stone them, they were aware of it and fled unto Lystra and Derbe, cities of Lycaonia, and unto the region that lieth round about. And there they preached the gospel. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a crippled man, a crippled from his mother's womb, who never had walked. Who had never, listen to what he said, who had never walked. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lycaonia, The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they called Barnabas Jupiter and Paul Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city, brought oxen and garland unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostle Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people, crying out and saying, Sir, why do ye these things? We also are men of like passion with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. And with these sayings, scarce restrained they, the people, that they had not done sacrifice unto them. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him he rose up and came into the city and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium uh, Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciple and exhorting them to continue in faith that we must through much, and here's the title, tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. May God add his blessing to the reading of our I know I read it fast, but let's break it down. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we could come tonight and, and share dear Heavenly Father and and look at Paul's life and Barnabas' life and, and glean from it, dear Heavenly Father, some truths that we can share today. Just help us to see and understand your word. Settle it upon our hearts and our minds. For we ask it in Jesus' precious name. 
Amen. We've been looking again. This is a missionary journey. It's the first missionary journey of Paul. Paul has carried along Barnabas. We know that he also carried along John Mark. But John Mark has now left and went back to Jerusalem. And we find that as Paul has went to these places, uh, even though the church under the guidance of the Holy Spirit had set Paul aside and Barnabas aside, uh, they have went on their own first going to the island of Cyprus because it was the hometown of Barnabas. And now we find them uh, uh, in this place called uh, Lystra and Iconium and, uh, and Derby here. And, and, and so we see that Paul continues preaching and sharing the gospel. So the first thing, and you fill in the blank there, is I want to look at the ministry at Iconia, Lystra, and Derby. Uh, what Paul is doing, Paul's not going on vacation. He's not going by happenstance. Even though, again, I want you to understand that, that Paul has made the decisions to go to these places. The Bible doesn't tell us it was the Holy Spirit that led him there. He's literally, as you can see on the map, he's just kind of connecting the dots as he goes from one place to the other. Again, when Paul preached, there was usually revival, a riot that has broken out, and uh, they kind of uh, kind of pushed him off the island of Cyprus there, and uh, he's coming to, to the Antioch, and they've kind of pushed him out from there. They kind of feared some of the things uh, uh, about Paul, and, and so he just goes on, and he just kind of goes and shows you that what the devil tries to destroy, God can use... Uh, uh, even when man makes the decision that God can use our decision to do those things as good. So this ministry then at Iconia and Lystra and Derby, I just want to kind of look at these places and kind of break some things down and, and like I said, give you some truth. Now the first place that he comes to after he leaves I I Antioch uh, is that he comes to a place called Iconium. Now, Iconium there is a, a pagan city. It's a, it's a large city that is there. And by the way, many of the roads, uh, that like, like Rome, many roads, uh, five major roads came together there in the place of uh, Iconium. Uh, and, and so uh, uh, what we find in this agricultural place, it was an agricultural place and a commerce place, but it also had agriculture that was there. We find that Paul begins uh, to become a pattern setter for how we are to do life and how we're to share the gospel. And, uh, it's about 80 miles from Antioch to where he gets here to Iconium there. It is a Gentile city. It is a very pagan place. Uh, this Iconium is there. Uh, and, and, and so the Bible begins to tell us some things as he gets there in Iconium. Uh, in verse 1 of chapter 14, it says he came to pass Iconium that they were both together in, in the synagogue of the Jews and so spake. What was Paul's uh, thing that he done? Well, same thing that Jesus done. Uh, again, when people say church is not important, we find Paul going to the synagogue. Why didn't he go to the synagogue? Again, this is a Gentile place, but there's a Jewish synagogue there because there's a great, uh, uh, great gathering of Jews that are there that's got a synagogue there. Paul goes and shares what the Bible says to the Jews first. And so he goes there and he's sharing there. Now, let me share this with you. What, Paul goes to Iconia. It's the next place on the map. Why did he go there? Well, uh, here's the truth for you tonight. You may be sitting there in your life. You say, well, I don't, I don't know where to start. Maybe there's things in your life that you need to handle. There's things that you need to do. Or, or maybe God has called you to, to do an action in your life or, or, or maybe to make a decision in your life, but you just don't know how to start. Well, for Paul, that wasn't a problem. Because let me tell you where Paul, Paul is an Iconium and he goes to the synagogue and he begins to preach there. Why? Because here's the truth for you tonight. Start right where you are. I, I, I want you to hear, I want you to see it in Paul's life. Paul started in the synagogue of Iconium because that's where he was. It was right there in that place. And so start where you are tonight. Hey, if you need a, a grace or you need mercy, start right where you are tonight. Uh, if you got some decisions to make, start right where you are tonight. Uh, the, the beginning place, I, I, I share this with people all the time when they say, well, you know, I, I've kind of walked away from God. I got away from God or got away from the church. I don't know how to get back. And I've always said, go right back where you, where you left him. Uh, go right back and find him right there where you left him. And, and so Paul gets an icon and gets to this Gentile uh, city. But he goes right there in the synagogue where the Jews are meeting together. Why? Because that's where he's at. 
That's the place where he's at. And, uh, and matter of fact, it says that uh, when he gets to Iconium there, uh, him and his companion stays uh, for a long time there, and they're speaking there a long time. Matter of fact, it, it goes on and it says, uh, verse 1, he says, they come together, they were both together, Paul and Barnabas, in the synagogue of the Jews, and so they spake that a great multitude, both of Jews and also the Greeks, believe. Why? Because Paul started right there where he was. That's, that, listen, that's where he needed to be. That's needed. Who, that they were the ones that needed to hear it. And so he started right there. Uh, of course, now verse 2 says, But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. Verse 3 says, But notice this. For a long time. Verse 3. Long time therefore abode they. And, and notice this next thing. They spoke boldly there. They spoke boldly there. And, and even though there was some opposition. And that's kind of going to bring me to my second point. Here in just a moment. Uh, uh, they, they, they literally stood there. Where they were. And boldly. Under the guise of the Holy Spirit. Under the guise of, 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 the, of the Word of God. And, and again, listen. Paul's not sitting down trying to write out a, a, a sermon. And he's not sitting there trying to figure out what he's going to say. He goes to the synagogue and allows the Spirit to move. And allows the Spirit to use him so that he boldly now speaks. Because here's the thing about Paul. Every time he speaks boldly, it causes problems. Every time he calls out the Jews or, or he speaks to the Gentile and he does it in a, a boldly fashion uh, we, we know that uh, it always seemed to cause a problem for Paul from, from some uh, but, but yet we find here that uh, notice this they, uh, that he spoke boldly in the Lord verse 3 which gave testimony unto the word of his grace uh, preaching Jesus to them and, and listen and, and that wonderful grace that Paul understood and it goes on and it says this. And, and, and because Paul was speaking boldly under the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, God was showing them uh, there in the synagogue uh, the power of God through the words of Paul so that signs and wonders uh, were done. Signs and wonders uh, to be done by their hands. And I love this man. Uh, uh, here, here is a time when the Spirit of God is moving in a synagogue. Here is a, a time in a, in a pagan city. Here is a time in a busy agricultural city. There would be, uh, there would be city folks and there would be country folks. Uh, agricultural people. And, and God has a message. See, it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your background. And it doesn't matter, again, where you are. Just, just be where you are. Let God use you where you are. Start right where you are. And so tonight, right where you are, hey, you're right where you are may be in a difficult place tonight. Right where you are may be uh, in, in a place where you, you're full of sin tonight. Uh, right where you are may be some confusion of your mind. But I want you to understand that God meets you right where you are. Uh, God has a message for you right where you are. God can uh, use you right where you are. And so we find that in in Paul's life. So don't ever take for granted right where you are. Well, I, I'm at this place or I'm at work here or I'm having to deal with these people here. Again, start like Paul right where you are. And so boldly they came and they spoke and, and right there where they were and God used signs and wonders. Now, the second truth that I want you to see in this story and the reason why I read all of this is this. There is always an immediate impact. When, you, when you're in God's presence, when you're doing what God has led you to do, where you, when you start right where you are, things are about to change. There's going to be an immediate impact uh, by God in your life. Uh, uh, that's the way God operates. Now, I understand there's times that God is on His timing, but I guarantee you, if you spend your time in prayer, you're going to see your answer. When you spend your time, listen, you may not get your answer today, but here's the thing. When you begin to pray, you begin to find the peace. You began to find uh, some understanding. You began to see things uh, a little bit differently than you did before you began to pray. Now, there was immediate impact. And for Paul's life, there's a, a good impact. And, and there's, a, there's what I would call, not necessarily for Paul, but there's a bad impact too. 
Right now the Bible says, here's the impact. Is Paul began to preach boldly what happened. There were signs and wonders. Uh, there were signs and wonders. There's an immediate impact as Paul is sharing there as, as, as him and Barnabas are able to do signs and wonders. By the way, one of that's later on when a lame man is healed that's been lame from birth. Uh, there, there, the verse 2, look at this. There were unbelieving Jews that it stirred up. There was an immediate image. That's the kind of the bad side of it. That, that when Paul, but the unbelieving, look at verse 2, but the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles. Well, well the Jews that was there and uh, listening to Paul, and uh, they go out and they begin to get among the Gentiles. Again, this is a Gentile city. And, and they made their minds evil. Remember I told you that the battleground is, a, is the battlefield is your mind? Again, when you trust it in Jesus and he's in your heart, the devil can't take your presence there, but man, he sure can't work on the mind. And notice this, that they literally, it's right there, their minds evilly affected against the brethren, against Paul, and uh, matter of fact, against each other. This is just, a, this is just a, a fragmentation of what God's going to do. Why? Because God has an immediate impact. He has an immediate impact. Now, let, let me share this with you. Uh, the gospel is 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 divisive in the fact of that the gospel points out a sin in man's life, and and and, and, and it is a contrast. Uh, it is a contrast to to the world, and so a lot of times we find this division. Uh, that's why Jesus looked at at the church. He looks at us and he says, "You can be uh, uh, you know don't be a, 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 of the world, but in the world." Well, we can't, we can't live like the world. Uh, there is a division. Why? Because, uh, listen, uh, 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 God and, and the devil are, are diametrically opposed. There is no middle ground with, with God and the devil. I, I know we as people, we try to find that middle ground. And, and the world today is trying to find the middle ground. And, 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 and all kinds of people are hollering and saying things and creating all kinds of noise, uh, trying to pull the two. Uh, you know, the Bible says that in the end time, what is evil they'll call good and what is good they'll call evil and we see that in our day and time trying to muddy the water well that's exactly what was happening there see there's always a immediate impact a matter of fact uh, uh, this impact even happens in Lystra when he, when he gets in over into Lystra, what did it say? There was a certain man there who had been lame, uh, who had never, ever walked. It's not like he had some kind of an accident. This dude has never been able to walk. Now, the, 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 the amazing thing about this, and, and I've shared this before, uh, and, and this is not against anyone who can't walk, but you know when you don't use your legs and you don't use your muscles, how, how the legs become small, the muscles become small. Uh, they, they, the longer you go, the harder it is to carry the weight of an individual. Now, here is a person. Now, think about this. A baby, over a period of time, grows and eventually learns how to walk. But it's a process. We find a baby that will begin crawling and they begin to pull up and they begin to stand and they'll maybe take a step or two and fall. But it begins to be a process to one day, all of a sudden, they take off walking. But they're not born, on the day they're born, they're not able just to get up and walk. There has to be growth and there has to be strength. There has to be balance and all of these things that, that the body has to learn and go through in order for this baby to walk. Can't do it at two months, can't do it at four months. I say it to say this. I want you to see the median impact when the gospel is preached and, and Lystra and this guy hears the gospel. Uh, Paul says, because of the faith of this guy, he turned around and, said, and says, uh, uh, get up and walk. And, and this guy, Amelia, who has never walked, now I don't know how old he is, but, but listen, it says from his womb, uh, he had never walked. Uh, verse 9 says, The same heard Peter speak, who steadfastly beholding him, and perceiving that he had faith, uh, I mean, heard, heard, heard Paul there. Uh, we find that Paul saw the faith in the guy to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand up, verse 10, upright on thy feet. And listen, and not only did he get up, but he leaped up. And now watch this. He had never walked, but now he knows how to walk. He didn't have to go through a process of learning how to walk. He immediately Walked, which tells me the know-how, the strength, and all of that 
came by the power of God. Hear what I said. When we need to know, when we need that know-how. When we need to have that physical strength, but not only physical strength, but mental strength that this guy would need. Right? That all of those things that he needed was provided immediately by the power of God. Why? Because what did I say? Start right where you are. And the second thing is there's always an immediate impact when you're in the presence of God, when you're in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so it happened at, at, at Derby, uh, it happens at, at Lystra, and it happens at Iconium that uh, immediately God does signs and wonders. We find again a, a man that is leaping there. Uh, and so uh, this all comes by boldly preaching, by, by sharing, by being right where he is, doing right what God called him. And the moment and the time, he's living in the moment. So many times we try to live in the future. We live in our tomorrows and we cannot appreciate the day that we live in because we're more concerned about tomorrow than we are in living in the presence and what God has got us in now. And so... That's just in Iconium. Well, it goes on and it tells us there in verse 4, but the multitude of the city was divided. Well, that, yeah, that's, uh, the gospel's going to divide. It's, it's opposite of the world. And so we find there that uh, the part were held with the Jews, uh, and I'm sure it's those unbelieving Jews that had stirred up the city. And part of the of the city was, uh, was yeah, they was on the apostle side. And so we already see the division that is happening there. Verse 5, notice this. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews with their rulers to use them despitefully and to stone them. And so the talk of the town began to be uh, of these unbelieving Jews and those other Gentiles in this pagan place. Uh, uh, they, they, they said, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's just kill them jokers. Let's, let's stone them. Let's shut them up. And, uh, that, 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 listen, again, look at the immediate impact. Look at the immediate impact that is happening here as, uh, as the gospel is being preached. So you're not going to stay the same, right? Now, watch this. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know how this happened. It, it, it could have been somebody told, but I, I, I don't know. I guess I lean more to the side of maybe the Holy Spirit. Because verse 6 says they were aware of it. Somehow, the Paul and Barnabas, they get aware of it, right? They were aware and they fled. So they leave that. And they leave Iconium and they go to the next town called Lystra. And, and right here in Lystra is, is where Paul is going to meet this lame man. Okay? Now, I want you to understand that you can start right where you are, and I want you to understand that there's always an immediate impact that happens, that happens in Paul's life, and the bad side of that was the, the third thing that I want you to see tonight is, is that there's going to always arise some kind of opposition. When you're doing what God, listen, God has never said that you won't walk through the storm. God has never said he'll keep you from the storm. And, 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 and listen, there, uh, and you know, I, I shared at Revival, I, I shared that not every storm that you go through is your fault. Not every storm that happens in your life is your fault. You can be doing the will of God and still the storms can come. I mean, you look at Paul's life and Barbara's life here. They're doing the will of, of God. They're, they're sharing the gospel and yet the storm is brewing. The storm is happening. <coughs> Why? Because... When you do the right thing, the ugly is going to rear, rear its head. Uh, when, when you do the right thing, uh, the devil is out. Listen, Christian, I want you to hear me tonight. The devil can't get you, but he can discourage you. Amen. And, and we understand that, that, that and, and listen, it, it's not really happening in Iconium. It's not that Paul is discouraged because literally Paul is sharing the gospel boldly. He's preaching boldly. He's not discouraged by it. But can I share this with you too? You can be born again, but not born last night. There are times when you need to dust the dirt off your feet. I'm not saying you need to give up on folks, but sometimes uh, uh, there are times in our lives when, when listen, if, if, if our very life is threatened and and we could be killed by something, 
We are more used alive sometimes than we are dead, right? Uh, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain, is what Paul says later. But you understand what he said, for me to live is Christ. He was going to preach, and he's going to preach Jesus Christ. Paul's not good to the city of Iconium if he, or, or, or Lister or Derby if he is stoned to death. And so, uh, in Paul's mind, it would be better just to, to walk away. Sometimes it's better just to walk away. Sometimes it's better to dust your feet to get away. Why? Because if you stay in that situation, it's just going to be discouraging. And, and so the devil wants to discourage us and, and for us to think that way. Uh, notice what it said. They were stirred up. They were stirred up. The devil is trying to discourage uh, Paul and Barnabas by literally stirring up the whole town. It's not just one person against Paul and Barnabas. It's multiple people. The devil stirred it up. Where did the devil stir it up at? In the mind. Look at verse 2. He, he, he stirred the minds up, evil affected against the brother. And so there arose this opposition. Again, hear, hear what I'm saying. Tonight, you're, you're right here at this place. Tonight, whatever's in your heart, whatever's in your mind, whatever you're dealing with, whatever that thing is, wherever that mercy needed, that grace is, whatever it is, wherever it is, God's got you. Good, bad, or ugly. Start right where you are. What was the second truth? There is always an impact. There's an immediate impact. If you get before God, if you bow down in an altar, if you, if you began to take the steps, if you began to do the right things, if, if you began to seek God, if you began to allow the Holy Spirit to move, there's going to be an impact in your life. Is it going to get bad at times? Yeah. Is, it going to, is people going to come after you? Absolutely. That's what the devil does. Why? Because the devil wants to discourage you. All right? Is there going to be opposition? Absolutely. That's what happened in Paul's life and Barnabas' life. But now the thing that I love about this is, is we get to, we go from, actually we go, you know, from Iconium, we get to Lystra. He finds a, a lame man there who he saw that he had faith and he heals him. The Jews from Antioch and, and Iconium, uh, listen, from Antioch, the 80 miles, there's 80 miles from Antioch to, and that's where he was last, to Iconium. And there was people who chased Paul from Antioch, the 80 miles to Iconium. Now notice what it says. Those folks, look at, look at verse 19. There came certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people. Uh, who persuaded the people, right? Who persuaded the people. And, uh, and, and, listen, and they actually stoned Paul later. And so we see, we see in, in Lystra there that it is at Lystra that Paul, uh, Paul is stoned. The people from Antioch, Iconium. They come and they gather up and, and, and they come and they stone Paul that is, uh, that's there. Now, here's what I want, you to, I want you to see. What they don't understand in Paul is this. And Paul on the backside of stone, he gets up and he goes back and preach. But before that, we, we can see the character of Paul and the fact that it says that he was out in Iconium for a long time there. And, and, and notice this. It says that uh, it's speaking a long time shows the resilience of Paul. I want you to understand tonight. Let's start right where you are. But I want you to understand there's some resilience that you got to have. When, those, when, the, when the devil comes after you, when those people say those bad things about you, I want you to understand that under the power of the Holy Spirit, you have some resiliency. You, you have the ability to weather the storm. I know sometimes you think, well, I, I don't know that I can do that. Listen, they stirred up the town, but Paul stayed a long time preaching there. Didn't matter what the people were saying. It didn't matter how the devil was affecting their minds. Uh, it tells us in Iconium that Paul stayed there for a long, verse 3. Long time therefore they abode there, speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony unto the words of his grace, and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. And so we find the resiliency. I want you tonight to understand that you have resiliency under the power of the Holy Spirit by God's hand. It may, it may seem like you're not going to make it. But the fact of the matter is, listen church, this is what Jesus said when he said, I'm going to build the church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That you and I, listen, all of us are from a long line of survivors. 
We're here tonight because of those saints that were before us. They were survivors. And I hope and pray that we're survivors so that the next, in the resiliency that we have, the next generation will, will be able to have church in this place if the Lord doesn't return, that they're going to have a, a place to come and, and share and the gospel is going to be preached and taught because you and I had the resiliency to make it even when the devil was rearing his ugly head. Amen. Paul said, we're going to keep on preaching. Now, it might not be an Iconium, but we're going to preach. And notice that. They just, they just kept on preaching. They spoke for a long, long time. But not only is there resiliency, but I want you to say reliance. What they didn't understand about Paul is that Paul had a reliance not on his education. Paul didn't have a reliance on, on the Pharisees' brethren that he, had, uh, that he had knew and come from. No. You know, Paul was a Pharisee, right? Uh, no, it wasn't any of those things. It wasn't that because Paul was a, a student of the law and studied the law. No, I want you to find out that, that Paul not only had resiliency, but he had a reliance on God and the Holy Spirit that was off the chart. So it didn't matter where Paul was. That's why he could say that when I'm in prison, I'm okay with that because that's where God's got me. And, and what would Paul's attitude be? I'm going to, be, I'm going to start right here where I'm at. If Paul's in a prison, then what does he do? He just sings in a prison. Why? Because that's right there where he's at. See, this is, this is Paul's life. I want you to understand, he, he's a pattern setter. We see it in Paul's life, how he sets this pattern for you and I. And so it didn't matter whether he was hungry, right there is where he started. It didn't matter whether he was full, right there where he started. It didn't matter whether he was living or whether he had died. To live is Christ, to die is gain. He always started right there where he was at. And, and Paul, through the power of the Holy Spirit, always had an impact, made an impact. Listen, he made an impact on a jailer that had it, uh, where he was chained to the wall. He makes an impact here in Iconium. He makes an impact in Lystra. He makes an impact in Derby. Everywhere he goes, he makes an impact. Why? Revival or riot everywhere that he preaches. And so we find this resiliency about him preaching a long time. We find a, re a reliance so that he can speak boldly. And we say he's speaking boldly. It didn't matter if it's, it doesn't matter. You can, listen, you can take any name, Iconium, he speaks boldly. You can take him to Lystra, he's going to speak boldly. boldly. You can take him to Derby, he's going to speak boldly. He spoke boldly at Cyprus uh, and, and Antioch, it, it, at Perga, wherever he goes in this missionary journey. He's always speaking boldly and speaking in the, in, the, in the synagogue there. And so the Jews from Antioch and Iconium, they persuade the multitude to stone Paul. Verse 19. And they came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people. He had an impact. And having stoned Paul, they stoned him. Matter of fact, the life it looked like was out of him so much they drug him out of the city. <clears throat> they drew him out of the city supposing that he had been dead. I, I, I don't know. I've always said uh, you, you can't beat the half of the life out of somebody. But I guess for Paul, they beat half the life out of him. Because they thought he was dead. He leaves Iconia again because just because you're born again don't mean you're born, <laughs> born last night. He was smart enough to know that he needed to leave Iconia. And yet he goes, listen, he left Iconia. Why? Because they were going to stone him. And he gets to Lystra and they stone him. God, where was you in all that? God, where was you in all that? Start right where you are. It's going to have immediate impact. Number, number three, there's going to be opposition. Number four, truth. But there's always quality. There's always quality. In God, there's always quality. Because they drove him outside the city in verse 19. Verse 20 says, How be it as the disciples stood around about him. The disciples, listen, those that believe, they're standing around Paul there. I'm pretty sure they're mourning him and they're looking at all the blood on him. They're looking at the bruises, all the beating that he took by all the rocks being, uh, him being stoned by that. How be it as the disciples stood around about him? Look at this. He just got up. No big deal. Resiliency, see. Resiliency, reliance on God. And so he stood up, he rose up, and what did he do? Went back to the city. He came into the city. See, Paul's not going to be defeated. Why? Because there's a quality that's happening in the life of Paul. There's quality in his life. There's, 
meaning to his life. There's a quality that God sees in us. The world may see somebody that's half dead. But God sees a spokesman, a preacher, evangelist, a missionary that had work to do. There's a quality that is, that, that, that is about him. Look at this. Here's the quality in Paul's life. Going from a man who's stoned being half dead. He, gets, he goes and he preaches. Verse 20. He rose up and he came into the city. What city? The city they stoned him in. He went right back to Lystra. He preaches there. But then the next day, notice this, he departed with Barnabas and he goes on to Derby. Now here's the thing I want you to understand. Here's the quality of life. He had been stoned to the point of that they thought he was dead. But God gave him the strength to go the next 20 miles to the next city the next day. I, I don't read in here where anybody doctored him. I, I don't read. I, they, uh, they may have. But I want you to see, here's a man who was beaten so badly they thought he was dead. And the very next day he's able to travel. He's able to travel. Why? Because there's a quality about him. There's a quality and a goodness about Paul, but you're not going to stop him from preaching the word. See, I'm not, I'm not being ugly tonight, but you may stop. You may keep me from preaching here, but you're not going to keep me from preaching. See, that's the way. That's the way our attitude is. You you may try to shut me up, but you're not going to shut me up. You you may try to you, you may try to shout me down, but you're not going to shout me down. I'm going to be who I am. I'm going to do what God has called me because there's a resiliency, a reliance on God that means there's a quality there that God sees in Paul, sees in me, sees in you. There's a quality that is there. And so we find that. And so look at what happened. Here's the quality of the life of Paul. 21a. And when they had preached the gospel, he goes to Derby, to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they return again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples. Here's what happens in Derby. There's a lot of people that believe. They make many disciples. They taught many. Notice that. And when they had preached the gospel to the city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in their faith. They make disciples there. And, and listen, the ones that have heard Paul, he says, continue now and what you know, continue in your faith. You see the quality that are there. Many disciples are made. And then it goes to that verse 22 and, and it ends in that verse 22 where I've titled this. And it says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in their faith. And listen to this. And he shares this phrase and that we must through much tribulations enter into the kingdom of God. Now. The speculation in looking at that is that Paul says this. If you're a disciple, you must suffer. So the question then would become, and, and I don't know if they ask at Derby or Iconium and Lystra. Because actually when he gets to Derby, he just turns around and he goes right back through. He goes back through uh, Lystra and Iconium and he goes back to Antioch. So he just comes in and goes through those three cities preaching. He turns around and he goes right back through those three cities. He goes back to Antioch. And so the question maybe by, by those in Lystra, the, the, the disciples that were made there at Iconium and Derby was, uh, uh, Paul, you mean that all Christians must suffer, suffer tribulation? Uh, you, you mean that hey, and for me to be a Christian and, and for me to, to, to have quality, that I, I've got to go through some kind of tribulation? That, that, in other words, that, that God, in order to show how, how good I am as a disciple and, and my resiliency and, 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 and my reliance on you, that, that God, that, that, listen, Paul, you mean I got to go through all this stuff? It, 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 is it guaranteed? Well, I know that Jesus said that you will have tribulation. And, 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 my, and, and, and I want you to hear this, that the apostles surely did that. The apostles, certainly they did. They, they went through a lot of, every one of those died a martyr, right? 
And listen, they, they went through a lot of stuff because of their faith. But, but here's what I want you to understand. You've got to understand the context of what Paul's saying. When, and we'll see that in just a moment. The context of what he's saying here. But, but certainly the apostles, uh, because of their belief and because of their faith, went through a lot of stuff. Now, maybe you're here tonight and, and, and maybe you say, well, yeah, I, I went through some stuff. But, but let, let me ask you, did you go through what the apostles have went through? I, I'm afraid to say that if most Christians went through what the apostles went through, those who claim to be Christian, I, I'll say it this way. If, we, if, if Christians went through what the apostles went through, you'd find out who true Christians are. You would find out the resiliency. You'll find out the reliance. You'll find out those who can make an immediate impact. You can find out those who are willing to work right where they are. You'll find out those who will stand against the opposition. Because, again, that was, you'll find those of quality as Paul's life. And so, certainly the apostles certainly did. Matter of fact, there were many in the early church, early Christians, uh, right? Early, early Christians, uh, uh, they did. Uh, and and uh, when they were first called Christians, uh, a, a lot of them went through uh, a, a lot of persecutions and tribulations. But I'll share this, not... Here's your next fill in the blank. Not all early Christians did. Matter of fact, some of you may be sitting here and you've never really went through some kind of, I mean, we have our trials and we have some tribulations, but, but we never suffered on the scale like Paul did, where he stoned to death or almost did. We've never went through the uh, we've never went through the tribulations that the apostles went through, who were beheaded and, and martyred for their faith. We haven't done that. I, I mean, we live in we live in 2023. We 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 have our freedoms. We uh, we have our safeties. Where uh, listen, we live behind the safety of our closed doors, and and we don't go through the the valleys like Paul did when Paul went to Antioch. He, uh, going to, to, from Perga to Antioch and those places where he went through the valley of the robbers. So not all Christians, not all Christians, not all early Christians did. So how can we reconcile what Paul is talking about? How Christians need to go through this tribulation. Well, again, we gotta we gotta look at the context. We gotta consider the content, a uh, context to who he was saying these things to, because in the early church that was the minority in the place that they were in the pagan place, it was almost a guarantee most of the time. I mean, in Paul's life, if, he, if he's going to make a difference, if, if Paul's going to share a gospel and be counter to the culture of the day, surely they're not going to, they're not going to lay down and just let Paul do that. Surely for the early Christians who are, who are going in and pointing out the sins of man and, 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 and sharing in the, in the hostility of, of areas of, of mankind, surely they're going to go through that. And so the context is, is just that. It's just that. Because you see, here's the thing that I want you to understand tonight. Another truth that I want you to write down is this. Is that divine intervention does not eliminate human responsibility. Divine intervention does not eliminate human responsibility. Because in Paul's life, there was a divine intervention. In Paul's life, he's, 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 he's stoned to, to what they would consider dead. And so there is literally a divine intervention in his life that raises him back up. And, and, and listen, God doesn't say, well, Paul, I'm sorry that you went through that. And so, Paul, here's what I, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you a little R&R. &R. I'm going to give you a little rest and relaxation. And, and Paul, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not going to hold you responsible anymore. And, and listen, I'm going to take away some of the responsibility from you. And you just go rest and you go, you go lick your wounds and you go heal your wounds. And, and you take a little R&R, &R, rest and relaxation. And, 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 you know, when you feel like it, then you can get up and you can, you can do what, you know, you do whatever you want to do then. The divine intervention in Paul's life didn't eliminate the human responsibility of him going and sharing and preaching in a place that he knew was, uh, I, I don't want you to get this wrong, but it was a hellhole. I mean, literally, they had served pagan gods so much that they thought Paul and Barnabas was Zeus. 
Uh, they, they, they thought that he, that Paul and Barnabas was Hermes and Zeus, that they were gods, that uh, the mythological gods that had come back. They wanted to do a sacrifice for them. And literally Paul says, wait a minute, I'm, we're just like you. No, it's the, it, the, the God that we preach, he's the, he's the one. Look, look, at, look at verse 15. Let's just look at it. And he says, sirs, why, why do you these things? When they, they listen, the, 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 the head of, the, uh, of, of Zeus's temple comes and wants to offer a sacrifice. The Paul says, why do you want to do these things? We also are men like passions with you. In other words, Paul, listen, Paul doesn't get rest and relaxation. Uh, uh, what he does is, is he's just been called to preach and, and to share and, 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 and to do what God's called. He has a responsibility. And he has a responsibility to call out the leaders of the town in this pagan place and say, why are you doing this? We're, we're also men like the passion with you. We preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God. Which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all the things that are therein. Who in times past suffered all nations. I like this. Uh, in times past he suffered the nations to walk in their own way. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness. Listen to that. He left himself with, uh, self without witness. And that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful season. Filling our hearts with food and gladness. And after that, they still wanted to do an offering. Verse 18 says, And with these sayings, scarce restrained they the people. They was hardly able to, to restrain them from doing that they had not done sacrifice unto them. So look at the context. Look at the context of his life. See, it seems like that in the early Christians, with early Christians, they were permitted to go through. Matter of fact, what did he say? He said, in times past, he suffered all nations to walk in their ways. There are times when God, God says, okay, go ahead. In our hard-headedness, uh, and, and us not wanting to take responsibility. See, I, we live in a world today where nobody wants to take responsibility. We're just going to live in the rest and relaxation. Well, if, if you offend me, you hurt me, then, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to holler, I'm going to cry out. But then, then uh, you know, then I, I, you know it's, it's, about my, my, it's about me feeling good. It's about no responsibility. You're responsible, and I'm not responsible. Divine intervention doesn't mean or doesn't eliminate human responsibility. They've been permitted to suffer. But Christians were not told to seek out Persecution. We, we, listen, Paul didn't go there seeking persecution. What Paul done was going there seeking people who needed to hear the Lord, about the Lord. Well, the persecution followed. Why? Right where you are, you're going to have an impact. There's going to be opposition, but there's quality. And listen, you have a human responsibility. You have a human responsibility. And so, Christians are told not to seek out persecution. But when it happens... When it happens in your life and my, my life, then we're told to glorify in God. You got your Bibles, and it's not going to come up on the screen, but turn over to 1 Peter. Turn over to 1 Peter. If you don't know where it's at, go to Revelation, start backing up. Do you come to 1 Peter? Go to, go to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. I got it there on your fill out sheet. 1 Peter 4, 16. I, 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 I'll give you just a second there because I want you to understand that there is glory and the quality of our life that God has given us that we can glorify and the fact that we go through the things that we go through. That builds our resiliency. That builds our reliance. And in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, I'll, I'll read it to you. This is what it says. It says, I want you to hear this. It says, yet if any man suffers as a Christian. Now I'm telling you, this is what the Bible says for you tonight, Christian. And it calls you out. For if any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Thank you, God, that I've, I have quality. Thank you, God, for the resiliency. Thank you, God, for the reliance uh, that I have on you. 
And, and, and that's where Paul's at. See, they didn't understand uh, this, this evangelist, this missionary, Paul, that was coming there and, and, and what, it meant, where, what it meant in his life to follow after God. And so, Christians, you're being told to glorify God in those struggles. To start where you are and glorify God. There's a reason and a rhyme to where you are and where you are. There's a quality in your life right where you are. And so, glorify God. Look at verse 14 if you're there in 1 Peter 4, 14. Because we're told to rejoice in that honor. And the honor of, of going through and, and, and having that resiliency and, and, and the human responsibility. And in God's uh, divine intervention, this responsibility that we have, verse 14 says this. It says, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, if folks will spit your name out of their mouth because you're a follower of Christ, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. Hear what he just said. For the spirit of glory and of God. Listen, it is a glory. You are, you are the glory of God for taking a stand and sharing and being and doing right where you are. The spirit of glory and of God. The spirit of God rests upon you. On their part. He is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Go to rejoice and the honor of tribulation. I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're going through. But I know this. Start right where you are. Have immediate impact. God's going to have an immediate impact right where you are on your life. Yeah, there may be some folks in your life that's going to oppose. And you're going to have some opposition. You're going to have a thought process that's going to change. You're going to try to be discouraged like Paul was. But stand on the resiliency. Stand on the reliance of God because there's a quality in your life. There's a quality in your life and a divine intervention that can happen. But you still have human responsibility to do and be what God would have you be. Heavenly